Hello, I'm Selma Schimmel, and welcome to The Group Room. Today I'm joined by Dr. Jonathan Goldman, a medical oncologist and lung specialist at Premier Oncology in Santa Monica, California, who is here to discuss advances in science that are changing what we know about cancer. This is the first in a three-part series about personalized medicine and how it helps doctors and you make important treatment decisions. So I'm happy to welcome you, Dr. Goldman. Thanks very much, Selma. It's a pleasure to be here. So I'm going to begin by asking you, what is personalized medicine and why is this such an important and vital advancement in cancer care? Science has progressed and medical care has progressed so that we now think about cancer very differently than we did even 10 years ago. We understand that in each group of cancer, say breast cancer or lung cancer, there are subtypes that act very differently. They may respond differently to different treatments. You may expect different side effects or toxicity to treatment. And it helps us direct our care specifically for that patient's tumor rather than treat everyone in a cookie cutter type approach. Thus, the expression that is becoming more and more known, personalized medicine. That's right, that's right. Biomarkers are really the central key of personalized medicine. How exactly does personalized medicine work in the whole area of cancer? We have different ways of studying a tumor. Uh, we, we call these biomarkers and we get them often from the tumor or from a patient's blood, uh, less commonly urine, uh, and this helps us know uh, different details about the tumor. Uh, perhaps we might look for specific mutations or for expression of different genes. By doing this, we're able to identify uh, what is driving the cancer to grow and, and what type of approach might be more or less effective. My understanding about biomarkers is that they have different uses, detection, diagnostics, prognostic, predictive. Explain that a little bit. How is it possible that a biomarker can have all these different roles? You're absolutely right. Uh, we have these different uh, ways of looking for the tumor cell and, and learning about the tumor cell. Uh, some of these biomarkers we use for screening. The most common one is the PSA test, which we use for prostate cancer. It's a protein that we see in men's blood. And by looking for it, it gives us an idea of a patient being more or less likely to have prostate cancer and whether more testing, in this case usually a biopsy, is important. Dr. Goldman, what cancer types have a biomarker that can be used for treatment decisions and which biomarkers have so far been identified? The forerunner in this is breast cancer. For a long time we've looked for hormone receptors and more recently looked for what we call HER2. Uh, that's one of the genes that is uh, in about 20% of breast cancer driving the cancer growth. So that, that is uh, the forerunner, but we've also developed this technique in other cancers. Uh, lung cancer, uh, which is uh, where I specialize, uh, we've identified specific uh, genetic and other markers to helping us uh, identify ahead of time which treatment is going to be most effective. And some of the other cancer types where we've made progress in identifying biomarkers? So many of them are the more rare tumors, but uh, GIST or gastrointestinal stromal tumor, we know uh, that alterations in a gene called CKIT can help identify whether treatment will be effective and help us pick between treatment options. And this is really growing in multiple tumor types. Uh, a gastric tumor, another relatively rare tumor, we can also look for HER2 amplification, just like breast cancer. Uh, really, this is a push in, in essentially all tumor types to find these biomarkers. Patients' colorectal cancer gets talked about so much. Um, patients, there's a lot of news surrounding uh, KRAS and e EGFR. That's right. Uh, in colorectal cancer, we know uh, that many patients will benefit from drugs that targeted a gene or a protein uh, on, on cell surfaces called EGFR, but if they also have a, a mutation called KRAS, a KRAS mutation, then they're less likely to benefit from those type of drugs. So this is a, a general principle. These biomarkers can either tell us that someone is likely to benefit from a drug or conversely that they're unlikely to benefit from a drug. 
If a patient gets tested and doesn't show to have a biomarker, how does this impact their treatment? The answer is somewhat different with each of the specifics, but uh, we were just speaking about colorectal cancer. You, you may choose to use or not use a, sp a specific drug for a, for a patient based on the biomarkers. However, if we learned to not use the drug for that patient, that also was a benefit because we were able to avoid the side effects of a treatment that was uh, predestined to be unlikely to be helpful. We also save the patient the time that was spent on that treatment and we hope to get to a more effective treatment sooner. Are there occasions where a physician may decide to retest a patient? If you don't find any mutation, you, you might decide that if the specimen, for example, wasn't good enough, you might decide, let's try again because it would have such an important impact on the patient's care. So for a group from viewer who's now listening to this discussion who says, you know, I had cancer eight years ago and I wasn't tested or this biomarker hadn't yet been identified, is there value even at a later date to be tested? There is in some circumstances. If it's a patient who had a, a cancer removed and there's no evidence of the cancer coming back, it's less likely that testing that tumor for these biomarkers will be helpful. However, if someone's been fighting with cancer these years, a, a retest for one of these biomarkers might open up new treatment options that in some cases can be very effective. Thank you, Dr. Goldman. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Cancer patients, family and friends, you can visit canceritspersonal.com, thegrouproom.tv, and vitaloptions.org for more information. Please look for the next Group Room episode where we're gonna provide you with more information on biomarker testing and how it may impact your cancer treatment.